Hey everybody, welcome to What Drives Us, episode 236, something like that. This is Wednesday, June the 28th, 2017. I am Tony Schaefer. I am hosting this week. Hope I can pull this one out. But fortunately, I have Mr. Russell Frost to help me along. Hey, Russell. Huh? Oh, hey, it's on. Hi, everybody. Uh, sorry about the mess behind me. I had to empty my storage unit. That's uh, the remnants of my library. But I am so happy to be here this week because Tony has an incredible show for you. So yeah, I really lucked I'm out. Be, I'm just going to be quiet and sit here and listen. Yeah, we'll right. see. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> So I'm gonna let's just jump in here. We have um, the founder of the Waterloo Region Voltec Group EV Association, our resident Chevy Volt driver, plug-in enthusiast, as always, mostly Canadian. He is Mark Coughlin. All Canadian, Tony. All Canadian, and oh. the 150 birthday. Just to point it out, in case any of the Americans in the crowd didn't realize, 150. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> And, and I think there's another Volt driver in the group today. I'm, I'm not sure, but we'll find out later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, of course, he's our man in Missouri, splits his time between his Prius and his Tesla, mostly the Tesla, but the S, not the X, that's the wife's. He is Dr. Evan Fusco. Hello, everyone. Glad to be on the show again this week. Sorry I was away for a few weeks there. We missed you, Evan. Thank you. As always. Now, um, we also, those of you watching, um, see the newbie, um, the guy we don't see very often. We have Matt Tresky. He's going to talk to us about Chargeway, which was his idea for streamlining the way we identify charging stations and compatibility. He revealed it last week at the EV Roadmap in Portland. Got rave reviews. We're thrilled and even a little honored to have him on the show this week. He's just going to sit and hang. He's going to uh, – just a second. Hold on. <laughs> wow. This is how we treat our guests. Right? He's different when, like from Russell. Wow, okay. <laughs> guest abuse. Uh, I, all I was going to say, all I was going to say was he is – Matt's going to chill with us through the news for the first half. We're going to dedicate the entire second of the second half of the show with Matt talking about Chargeway. So sorry, Matt. I had this whole script. I had to get through it. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to sleep tonight. <laughs> no, that's totally fine. <laughs> that works for me. And again, I, I can throw in uh, my two cents in peanut gallery moments on the news too, because there's some definite uh, fun stuff to talk about. So, so yeah. Yeah. Yay. Peanut Yay. Gallery. So now I'll listen. <laughs> what, wait, what is that? A Perrier? Yeah, I want, I, 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 it's like my anti Ricky Bobby moment is like literally right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm throwing down. All, all I got is this homemade beer. Honestly, that, <laughs> I ain't that's got no great. fancy Perrier. Although, have you guys had the Tic Tac mixers, like the cherry cola ones? These things are honestly good. Anyway, that's. I'll shut up. <laughs> <laughs> per water. It's that fancy per water. Wow. Yeah. You bubbled water. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna wrestle. Um, kick it off. Yes, with um, Alphabet and Avis. Huh? Oh! So, um, there... Thank you. Was it Bloomberg for that? Automatically playing video. So, oh um, there were two deals this week, and I only put one in the links, and I probably should have announced the other one, but um, Alphabet, which everyone else knows, the rest of the world is Google, because Alphabet... Uh, who knows? They own all the letters, I guess. Um, inked a deal for um, uh, with Avis to um, manage a 600-car self-driving fleet uh, that Alphabet is going to develop. That's a big deal, obviously, and, and, and Avis certainly has experience managing fleets of cars much larger than this, so it's a good deal for both of them. Um, obviously, this is um, uh, Alphabet's uh, Waymo subsidiary uh, that did this deal, and, and it's very, very cool. But the story that sort of eclipsed this one um, was that uh, there was a, another Bloomberg story. And Bloomberg, like, I, you know, I love making fun of the financial press. And uh, <laughs> that's Bloomberg. Um, Bloomberg reported on a story that blew up Hertz's stock for like a day that Apple and Hertz were inking a similar partnership for self-driving cars. 
until they read the fine print. <laughs> uh, in fact, uh, Hertz is going to lease six cars. <laughs> <to> <laughs> Apple. So Apple can experiment wow. on them. Uh, nothing wow. at all like the Avis and Alphabet deal or Avis and Waymo deal. Um, but, uh, you know, it's it's link bait it's beautiful it says apple and everybody clicks on it everybody you know mm. those investors those rational animals they stampeded <laughs> to blow her stock up and then only to yeah so I, anyway. I hope they space those out across the country so we all have an equal chance to mm -hmm. <laughs> every 800 miles <laughs> all yeah. Six yeah. Of them. yeah one wow car. just one car <laughs> so yeah that's uh that that's uh Yes. You know that just goes that just goes to show when you look at headlines and one says Alphabet and Avis and the other one says Apple and Hertz. People are like, "What the what the fuck is an Alphabet?" And they're like, right. "Apple," and they run to Apple. Yeah. There you go. That's why branding matters. I'm put my reservation in now. Yeah, <laughs> I, and I, this, I don't even know that like these cars aren't going to be. I mean, they're leasing cars to Apple. Basically, like they could have just written the story like Apple went down and bought some cars. You know, like who cares? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all. Sorry, that's all I got. That's, all. that's it. <laughs> well, I know as a fact that both of those articles are going to appear on our Facebook page, and that is at facebook.com slash what drives us. Uh, make sure and leave your comments, um, you hashtag link bait. Um, and you know, as always, and a lot of you are really good at giving us uh, news articles to talk about things that you find and you want us to talk about. And some of those are on um, this week's show. Hopefully you'll recognize them. Also, if you use Flipboard as a news aggregator, be sure to subscribe to the What Drives Us magazine. All right, so I'm going to take the uh, the next article, and I never thought I would ever say the words that Volvo seems to have a kangaroo problem. <laughs> I'm just going to let that sink in for a minute. Yeah. Um, so stumbled upon this in BBC News, talking about uh, Volvo's um, down under. So it turns out that when a kangaroo jumps, when the kangaroo is on the ground, the car can perfectly identify how car how far away it is, but when the kangaroo jumps in the air, the car can't figure out now the distance of the car because it, it can't put it in um, connection to the um, to the ground underneath it. So it actually thinks that it's really far away. So apparently, as a kangaroo is bouncing across the street, the car thinks it's really far, really close, really far, really close, really far, really close. Um, so it really confuses the, uh, the autonomous drive. But um, what's interesting is Volvo is going to go ahead and release these cars even though 80% of animal collisions <laughs> involve kangaroos. <laughs> so, so really this should have been titled Volvo Hates Kangaroos. <laughs> I mean that's 80% that's with human drivers. And now you have autonomous vehicles that have a hard time distinguishing. They can't tell at all. <laughs> they can't tell at all where the kangaroo is. So yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, this this can only get better. <laughs> right right now I am googling how much does an adult kangaroo weigh? <laughs> oh my god. Anyone want to guess? <laughs> it's got to be like what, a deer. Five hundred like pounds? What? No, no they're like no. 150, 200. They're not very yeah. good. Yeah, oh. one hundred ninety eight pounds oh, is the average. Uh, but you know, you hit that at sixty miles an hour, and <laughs> it feels, it it well feels like one eighty nine. It's metric, right? It's, <laughs> exactly, yeah. it's metric. That can't be yeah. more than hundred kilograms. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, okay, now years. there's a dumb question. Does, does it matter? If the car's confused whether it's close or far, shouldn't the car be slowing the hell down anyway, whether it's close or far away? Well, if it's close, it'd be slowing the hell down. If it's far, it might not deem it necessary yet. All right. Yeah, I, you know, I, I don't know, you know. So what they're doing, it says in the article that um, Volvo safety engineers have begun filming kangaroos' roadside behavior. <laughs> 
<laughs> I feel sorry for people at bus stops. I mean, because yeah. that's going to go. <laughs> so they now have to teach the car what a kangaroo looks like, how a kangaroo behaves, and, you know, how to do spatial recognition on a jumping kangaroo. Oh, What's a job God. application for that look like? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but I want that job. <laughs> yeah. Here's, 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 name of Joey. here's an idea for Volvo. Don't test your cars where there's kangaroos. <laughs> right. Go to another country. <laughs> there is that, right? Simple. Here we are. I just, I, yeah, I kind of pictured that thinking of um, what Evan said, the job description. Like, how do you put that on a resume? So tell me, what's the most challenging obstacle you've overcome? Well, you ever hit a kangaroo at 60 miles an hour? <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's got to deploy the airbags and everything. That's just brutal, you know. Oh. I mean, ow! You can only imagine if it's in the air; it's coming through the windshield. I'm still trying yeah. to get over the fact that 80 percent of accidents are with kangaroos. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they must Maybe. be rampantly walking across the roadways <laughs> constantly. They hit cars. Yeah. Well, maybe they're driving. Maybe that's why. Yeah, yeah, they're oh, driving. They're yeah. Kangaroos. <laughs> Hey, Joey, you better drive. I'm drunk. 16,000 kangaroo strikes a year in Australia. Jesus wow. God. Well, although, how, oh, many deer, how many deer strikes in America? You've got to think know. that number is that, at least that high. I'm sure it is. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's a and, and, and hitting a deer in a car is no fun, says the guy who's never done it and never wants to. Right, right. I have to admit, when I when I see the verb so strikes. 1.23 million deer vehicle collisions occurred in the U.S. between July 1st, 2011 and June 30th, 2012. Wow. $4 wow. billion dollars in vehicle damage. Yeah. $4 billion. You know, the body oh, shops are God. feeding the deer. That's what I'm talking about. The corner of the highway. There, wow. there, there's body shop owners that are literally throwing deers in front of cars. <laughs> 200 deaths. Oh, Jeez. that's not good. Jeez. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 Deer is years. any better. Deer mm. a problem. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. That eight, yeah, 80,000. That's nothing. <laughs> Drop a rounding error in the U.S. for deer strikes, man. Well, Volvo is going to see what they can do to bring that number up, apparently. <laughs> so, <laughs> come back next year. We'll see what we got. Oh, nice. All right. All right. So, now I'm going to throw it back to, uh, to Russell. Um, Me? Yeah, for a little VW Humble Pie. So, um, uh, you know, I love, I love Volkswagen. And you regular watchers know how my, my deep abiding love and respect for the VW group and for their automobiles. So nothing made me happier. I peed myself just a little uh, when I saw a Chevy Bolt whip ass on a VW GTI and a drag race. And I want to share that with you because maybe, maybe you'll enjoy it just as much as I do. So let's watch that now, shall we? Let's. Dun, dun, dun. This is from, by the way, uh, the fast lane. Uh, that's Roman, the, the main fast lane guy. There we go. And there's there and they're off. Look at that GTI. And then, uh oh, oh, look at Then the bull beats him. Um, so yeah, and they did this was the second race, they did this twice, um, three times. They did it three times. Oh, did they do three? Yeah, they did I didn't three. watch that far. They had a tiebreaker, did they? I see. So I just, you know, I whatever, it's fun, it's it's. Guess what? The Chevy Bolt's kind of dorky looking, but it's not that. It's kind of fun car. Mm -hmm. It's cool. I it like the fast. fact that they actually called it a hot hatch. Yeah, uh, a hot hatch. I, I yes, was like, yeah. you know, I'm okay with that. I mean, that's that's a better thing to call it than what some five door utility thing. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, yeah. I, that was the thing that you know has plagued any kind of non petrol car is yeah. that the, you know their appliances they're no fun and da, da, da. Mm -hmm. and everybody who's driven EVs knows that even. Even the little Mitsubishi Imi was kind of fun to drive. It was kind of spunky and fun. I mean, granted, you didn't feel very safe in it, and it kind of <laughs> wiggled when it went fast, but <laughs> it was still fun to drive, you know? And and the Bolt is a great car. Uh, it's well-engineered, and it's quick for what it is. So, yeah. hey, cheers to our friends at Chevy. And, Matt, you're a Bolt owner, right? 
Uh, no, we we have a Spark EV and a Volt, but we're probably a gonna get a Volt when the Spark when the, and the Spark is you know is lighter and faster than that. But the Bolt, I've driven it, and it is fun to drive. So yeah. yeah, I haven't driven it yet. Yes, Chevy, that's a hint. Uh, so yeah, and then let's see now. I think I have to, I have to refer back to the script here. Oh no, I don't talk yet. So I'm gonna turn it over to Tony. Oh yeah, so we're just uh, basically this just playing This is my tag favorite here. headline of the night, by the way. I'm sorry, I love this. Yeah, so the headline I wrote with this is, you know, finally some peace and quiet. <laughs> Subtitled: um, I never thought I would appreciate Donald Trump's unwavering desire to kill this fortunate people. Um, you know, it's horrible <laughs> until it benefits you, right? Um, so, you know, where where. <laughs> I'm just going to let that sink in. Um, PC has left the building. How are we still on the <laughs> I'm sorry, Matt. Have you been on the show before? Yeah, every, every time a little part of me dies, honestly. <laughs> we are nothing if not soul crushing, okay? <laughs> Hopefully your wife won't hit you with something when the show's over. Yeah, right. She's like, wait, which one was it again? I'm like, oh, the what dries up. You know. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure we just lost our White House sponsorship right there. Oh. Um, so something that we railed against for, for many years until it was finally made mandatory and then finally implemented was the noisemaker. And um, for those of you who drive electric vehicles or plug-in uh, range extenders or whatever, you are all too familiar with the pedestrian awareness system that uh, for cars traveling on, on battery power below 90 miles an hour, they must make some noise so that uh, blind or visually impaired people, pedestrians, can hear the cars coming even if they can't see them. Um, just a, a quick pop quiz. How many reported deaths from EVs not involving kangaroos have there been in the United States? Anyone? Anyone? Yeah, not a single visually impaired person has been uh, brutally mold, mowed, ban, mowed down by an EV traveling less than 19 miles an hour. Oh, but, 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 but when there's a lot. But, but, but. Oh, right, right. But, 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 right. Um, yeah, but that's okay. I have it on um, good faith from um, a large number of climate science deniers that when you lose your vision, your other senses become more powerful. And therefore, even though they can't see anything, they have ninja skills like Daredevil. True fact. <laughs> Some of the leading client deniers have, have explained that to me in um, very good detail, and they know science, let me tell you. Nice. So in the unending effort to cut waste and make things better for businesses and save jobs, God knows what this has to do with saving jobs, the current administration is looking at throwing out um, some of the regulations that were suggested and put in place during the last eight years, during the Obama administration. Um, saving blind people is one of them, and the other um, is eliminating the mandatory rearview cameras because blind people and children are the funnest people to run over. Um, one moving forward, one moving backward. <laughs> I almost got through that. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, really, Tony, should you have? Yeah, you I know. Have? I mean, that was just a footnote at the end was, oh, and uh, by the way, another targeted rule is the rear view cameras that prevent drivers, especially those in taller utility vehicles, from backing over children. <laughs> <laughs> and then he laughs at the end. <laughs> oh I mean, that's, that's just a footnote at the end of this article. Why why do you okay, the the pedestrian noise thing, you know, we, we all know it's, it's it's relatively stupid. But why do you take away backup cameras? That's just stupid. Because we want to save jobs. Right. It saves jobs. It Bring saves back jobs. coal. That's yes. Right. Is there some of those going to be jumps. sitting in the back of my car now, facing out the back, saying, you're good. That's you're a good, good job. <laughs> like with every brand new car. It's like, come every on. car comes with a mother-in-law. <laughs> yes. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like a man who doesn't have one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, so I mean that's it. So you know, I don't know if this is a victory or what this is. I mean, I've I've always wanted. You know, I I have my two thousand four Prius that does not have a noisemaker. Um, I honestly was not looking forward to having a car with a noisemaker. I I think I'm going to get my car before you know this regulation is done away with. Which, by the way, I should point out that the um, Oh, what was it? The um, it, it 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 might not be taken away because it was suggested that um, since Congress enacted this as a regulation, that it took a it took an act of Congress to get it implemented. So it literally would take an act of Congress to get it taken away. Mm -hmm. um, so it, so it might not happen. But um, but yeah, so I you know I don't know. I understand the safety side. I really do. I just also think it's kind of silly and, and frivolous. Well, but I'm curious. Did, so correct me if I'm wrong. The first gen Volt didn't have that, or it didn't at first, right? It didn't, because it I, what did correct, not, correct. What it yeah. has, what it had was a pedestrian horn. Yeah, and I love that thing. I called it. Yeah. The, I call. I mean, honestly, I called it the fu button because it was just like, <laughs> because if you did have someone in front of you, you could just kind of. But it was a really nice. Brrr, you yeah. know, and yeah. that was the yeah. noise. And it was it was the polite way. If even if someone was in a light in front of you and they didn't move, instead of hitting that horn and the whomp noise, you could actually just give them the, the yeah. little "Hey, you!" kind of a nice nudge. I loved mm -hmm. that feature. Frankly, I thought it was great. Yeah, so, I miss it in the second gen. Yeah. Well, the first thing I did was reach up to this, you know, to the turn signal. I was like, "Oh, my button's gone." And they said, "Oh, yeah, it's got that noisemaker now." And I thought, "Yeah, that's not as good as the," you know. So. Yeah. Yeah, I, that would be uh, much better. You know, you, you see somebody walking with a cane. You know, that should be your first indication. Oh. Or somebody, no, not to hit them, but. To, why don't we just put tasers in the front of the cars and build those in and shoot them out anytime yes. somebody. Yes. yes. Have 50,000 volts, asshole. <laughs> This is, this is like just like getting down into like Grand Theft Auto moment of like, yeah, no, exactly. you know, you know. yes, exactly. Here's your bat. Right. <laughs> right. But, I, mean, I mean, these days, these days, it's not visually impaired people who we have to worry the most about walking in front of cars. It's people with, with smartphones and tablets yeah. and and that kind of stuff. And they get they I say they it could easily just be me as well it's so possible to get so absorbed into that that mm. you really do you you wouldn't even hear the pedestrian warning it, it just blends in with with all the other noise and whatever and especially if you have your headphones in and you know whatever yeah well, it's, so, you know, that's an interesting point because that's that's a distraction whereas someone who is blind is more as you even said like they're more focused on what else can they sense that allows them to know where they are so it's that's actually a very interesting point because yeah, chances are you're gonna run into or have to like let somebody who's just flat out not paying attention staring down at their phone, you know, know mm -hmm. what's going on, and they're not gonna hear the noise maker. They'd hear the brrr if you had it, you know. Yeah. So. If we ah, had it, I missed that horn, man. That thing was so cool. <laughs> now what's funny is, is on the Spark EV, it also has it, but it also flashes the lights when it does nice. it. Oh, and so man. if you're behind somebody in traffic, yeah. the first time my wife used it, you know, she went to just give the brrr noise, but then we saw the lights reflect on the car and we went, oh, now that's just absolutely annoying. Now, now you're the person <laughs> that hit the horn and flashed your brights yeah. at them. It's like, oh, yeah. never mind, not using that anymore. <laughs> and the guy comes like, out with a pistol. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to kick it over to Mark, who is going to tell us about um a particular company that we enjoy making fun of oh. yeah it's happened just a few times with this company I, i'm not mm -hmm. sure why but uh just recently uh faraday future uh enrolled in a run up uh, to pike's peak in a challenge that was timed they self-sponsored their car and took it out uh into the uh, mountainous region to uh run the table and they did they uh, broke a record for production cars uh, so, and, <laughs> and had this car beat the Tesla time for, for with about, uh, what was it, 20 seconds? Uh, 20, yeah, 20 seconds. 20 seconds uh, beat them. But uh, real interesting to see the car uh, take off and run through the mountain, uh, up the mountain, actually. And uh, there certainly is a number of different videos uh, that are attached and you can watch. 
watch the car take off here. Maybe we'll just uh, run that video as it uh, gets ready to roll. And uh, here we are, timer set, and off it goes. <clears throat> row. No row. So, oh, no. <laughs> no that row. was it. It was gone. And uh, <clears throat> just uh, some controversy, obviously, because the car, is it really a production model? I guess, you know, uh, they did produce it. Um, but as we mentioned in our previous podcast, where you can get a lot of information on this, uh, the Tesla life, the car, uh, there's only a few of them made, so I don't know if you can really call it a production car. But no, uh, I, think, I think they're taking wild liberties with that word. Yeah. 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 So uh, as Russell mentioned in a previous uh, show, that uh, going by that, uh, there's a bazillion mechanics with garages that also run factories and have production cars. So right. we can uh, we can certainly see uh, why the conflict is there, but uh, still, uh, kudos to them uh, for yeah. running it up the hill and uh, getting an excellent time and uh, pushing uh, more EVs uh, to do the same. Yeah. yeah, I I almost feel like I want to apologize a little for bashing them, but I'm not going to just out of principle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I do say, you know, tip of the hat, my hat's off that they, you know, made it up to the top of Pike's Peak. Um, they even did 20 seconds faster than uh, the Tesla Model uh, P90. Um, I, I just wish they would have stopped at that and said, we made it to the top and we beat last year's Tesla, um, you know, time and just not gone with the production thing. I mean, to me, that ruined it. You oh, went yeah, too yeah. far. Yeah. I it just goes that. in with the hyperbole, hyperbole of Faraday Future from the beginning and their marketing. Um, a lot of bluster. Well, and I think everybody mm -hmm. sees everybody sees right through it. It's like, what's to be gained by saying something that literally everyone is going to say no? I mean, it's yeah. I don't see the point. Yeah, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's all you know. It, it's it's not bragging if you can do it, you know. And I, mm -hmm. they did crush again. And you even compare the FF91 to a Model S. Those are two very different vehicles by sake of the fact of how big the FF91 is. And so mm -hmm. uh, I think that's in that sense. I think it's like well, that's impressive. They did that with that big of a car. I mean, 20 seconds is at Pike's Peak. That is not nothing. So, but on a production car, no. It was on a very well built electric platform. So, yeah. Custom made platform. <laughs> hey, speaking of Faraday Future, this next ad has nothing to do with them. If you have a Prius and you need accessories or fun stuff for your car, be sure to visit the Prius shop for all your accessory needs. You can find it at PriusChat.com slash shop. That's PriusChat.com slash shop. Uh, every item sold at the Prius shop has been inspected and tested by Prius owners. PriusChat.com slash shop. Please do it. Danny's children need food. <laughs> and you could sponsor a Cooper for as little as 40 cents a week. <laughs> <laughs> That's the show title. <laughs> I got to write that one down. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> for less than a cup of coffee. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I've made the promise early on, Matt Tresky. Um, oh, Tesky, no R. Tesky. <laughs> Wait, Holy hold on. Cow. Well, okay, there now. Tesky. Sorry, don't. <laughs> Should we just start, start the show over? Come on, somebody's, a, somebody's a little Tesky. Oh. 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 Wait, I got to see if I've heard that one before. Oh. Uh. <laughs> 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 So Matt invented, dreamt up, bumped his head in the shower. I'm not sure I want, but <laughs> started explaining to people this concept of Chargeway, which um, our friend John Volker at Green Car Reports called the best electric car idea you've never heard of. But you're not going to be able to say that anymore because Matt's going to tell you all about it. So. <laughs> yeah, no, and, and it was it, – it was, uh... An idea, honest, to be honest, the first time I came up with an idea related to what it ended up being was almost three years ago. And it was after our, we had had our first EV for about a year. And I kept running into the situation of anytime I talked to someone about, you know, what owning an EV was like, and I started explaining the things that I had learned, which were, you know, J1772 and level one, level two, and wait, that's not, 
you know, Chatamo and it, all those things, I could tell that everybody that was just a friend of mine that owned a car kind of kept smirking saying, this doesn't exactly sound like something that is simple. You had to clearly want to learn this. And so I thought back then, again, this is years ago now, like how could you go about simplifying it? But I, I knew I needed to learn more of the ins and outs of what had already been done within the industry to really be able to assess how could I make it better if I wanted to. Uh, I, and I basically married my background and experience in the automotive industry in general for marketing and branding there and wanted to figure out, okay, what's been done for decades that people know and understand about cars and why is it electric vehicles seem to be treated so differently? And what it boiled down to for me was I, and I mentioned this a little bit on one of the shows I was on previously, um, when uh, Ed Niedemar asked one question, he said, you know, why is it that Tesla gets so much love and will another brand get the same kind of, of love and attention that they do? And I said, unless, it, unless they come out of nowhere and start up just like Tesla as a pure EV startup, I don't think so. And it's because I'd, I'd found that within the ecosystem of the automotive industry, there were, there were five major players, which were the automakers, the dealers, the gas stations, service stations, the fossil fuel industry, and then policymakers. And as soon as you introduce an electric car into that ecosystem, you effectively take away two of the stakeholders. You remove service stations and gas stations and the fossil fuel, fuel industry, and you replace it with charging stations and with public utilities. And so I, the more I looked into it and, and saw how that ecosystem disruption was happening, I thought, is it more than that? Is it is it that people think these things are too technical and they don't understand it? Is it that they're scared of actual range, which is still, yes, an issue? Or is there another part of that question and problem that relates to we're making it too complicated for them to even understand, when in reality, it's still just a car? And so what I thought of was, okay, if, if at the end of the day, the utility of an electric car is still from point A to point B, I mean, again, taking the autonomous conversation away from the situation and saying that operates then just like a gas-powered car, then the only difference then is the energy. We need to discuss the energy the same way we've always discussed buying a tank of gas because that's how people know how to operate a vehicle. You need to put energy into it, so how do you do it? So I wanted to develop a lingo and a system and language that basically felt familiar. So if someone said, hey, if you walk in a dealer lot and it's a Chevy dealer, for example, and they say, oh, you're looking at a cruise, that's gonna run on regular, and someone goes, oh, okay, cool, I understand that, it's no problem. But then in the same way now, they could say, oh, you want a Bolt EV? Well, that just runs on blue. And so I wanted to create a system and conversation that allowed for dealers have an easier time to sell it, but at the same time, other stakeholders that got brought into the ecosystem could also have a language that made them competitive to the fossil fuel language. So, I mean, right now utilities don't know how to talk about the fact that they provide energy to vehicles. And charging stations kind of are parked right in the middle of that saying, we, per we offer it, but when you show up at each one, it doesn't exactly look like a universal gas pump. They come in all shapes and sizes. And so I thought, well, we need to create a wayfinding system that allows people to view electric vehicle charging the same way they would view buying a tank of gas. So that's essentially where it came from and what I developed out, so. That's it? Yeah. Okay, we're done. Yeah. No, can, we just, what, can you describe the whole system to everybody, how it works? And and I, Matt, I'm gonna upload one of your pictures over the top. Yeah, I mean, again, uh, yeah, yeah, actually, if you wanna, the article that, uh, that John from Green Car Approach put, uh, reports put together was, was really clear in what I wanted anybody who was an EV owner or interested in EVs to see, which was systematically, it's, it's very straightforward. The idea is that we would label both, well, label the vehicles, label the charging stations, and then also with respect to, you know, smartphone apps, you would have the ability to view the same identity for everything, and it would be all the same, whether you're on your phone, looking at your car, or standing at a charging station. And so the concept would be that because we have different types of plugs, we needed to have a way of identifying those without using the, again, that's a great image right there of don't use the schematic drawings of each plug. You could tell that engineers thought that this would be compatible with the general public in the sense of saying, well, we could identify what is the difference between a Chatamo or a J1772. And so I thought, well, that's not, that's not really the case. Most people aren't that visually tuned into what they're staring at. And then the next step was saying, okay, well, instead of using the schematic drawing, we'll just start using the acronyms. And so J1772, CCS Combo, Chatamo, et cetera. And that, in either case, you're not discussing it in a way that sounds as similar as saying, I get regular or I get supreme. And when you show up, you just hit the 87 button or you hit the 91 button. And so I figured at that point, if we could develop out a system that felt similar, it would be easy. So the starting point essentially is the charging stations would need to be labeled correctly. 
And from there, the vehicles would have to carry the same labeling. And so if you have, again, if you're buying a Bolt, for example, you could call that a blue plug. If you're buying a Tesla, you could call it a red plug. And obviously within that, there are different plugs for different vehicles. And so for a Nissan Leaf, for example, it has two. And so instead of having to know two different acronyms or two different schematic drawings, you just know two different colors. And the number system alone is what, what I think simplifies the idea of speed, which is the biggest difference between electricity and gasoline. Gasoline, you gasoline, have, you one, have speed, one speed, it's the same thing, thing, same thing, thing wherever you go, whereas with charging, whereas with charging really you'll identify, identify what the speeds are and how they, are, how they work within your lives. And I felt that by creating a system that had visual a visual, visual trigger to it, like a color and a number, we could actually bring together you know, what would be a simpler way of saying, hey, you have one and two at home, but, oh, you guys, did my audio still go out? You're good now. You're Yeah, you're now good. you're good. Okay, cool. I just went Cylon there for a minute. It was kind of cool. <laughs> it was. <my> Cylon. <laughs> I was thinking Borg, but yeah, Cylon was a better. All of a sudden, you're in Daft Punk. You know, it was like, <laughs> oh, nice. Well, yeah, I mean, basically, the idea was that you would have you would have a system that allowed people to quickly understand which color they needed to use, and as long as the wayfinders were there from the day they bought the car. So the selling process would be: you buy a, a Bolt EV, and you've never heard anything about an electric car in your life. But when you leave the dealership, you're told you basically use blue plugs, and that's what you use. And you can charge at three or less. And so at home, you can use one or two. But if you're outside of your house, you can use three or two or whatever you find. And so three being that fast, start, fast charging starts at three. And we already essentially call a lot of these things um, you know, by, this, by this terminology. We call it level one and level two. And so what I wanted to create was a system that made it consistent. And that's what we were lacking. And so and all the times we have conversations, we tell people it's so convenient. You can do it at home or there's electricity everywhere. You can charge wherever you want to go. I, I felt that, well, there was no visual driver to people explaining and understanding that. And essentially, the biggest thing it came back to for me was I do a lot of work with, with OEMs, and I've done dealer training in the past. And I kept coming back to this concern that we're giving the dealers a lot of grief for not being able to sell these or not having interest in talking about them. But then I thought, we're really not providing them the proper tools to actually sell them. They, they know cars, and so we need to help them see that EVs are just cars. And at the same time, I think the general public will benefit from the same type of solution. So, Cool. All right. So have you been in contact with uh, like PlugShare or ChargePoint and some of the, the major EV companies at all? Are they interested in um, starting to implement this? Or where, where are you right now in the implementation and spreading the gospel phase? <laughs> <laughs> no, and right now, so essentially, I prior to EV roadmap, I had shown it to a handful of people to that were in the industry to get their feedback, and all of them, the feedback was essentially universal in saying this is great, but we need to see the response from the major stakeholders. And so, okay. to your point and your question, so you know, PlugShare has seen it, um, and I had a, a meeting with them both prior to EV roadmap and discussed it further with them at EV roadmap, and they like what they see. Their response was, "No, this is great. We see that we see the benefit of this." And I think every major stakeholder has their own questions and concerns. So in, in this sense, it's they, they've had their identity on their, you know, their app the same way for a long time. So they're trying to figure out how this new identity would work with explaining to their users what it means. Um, and obviously, in that point, that collectively then requires having charging stations say, well, we'll have it waiting for them when they show up. So I was able to have some conversations with uh, EVgo as well. Uh, I've uh, presented to Electrify America. And again, yeah, that's a great step-by-step -step image for how it would work. And they, every, again, the, the consensus is everyone says, yes, of course, this is a very elegant solution to an obvious problem. It's now the creating the coalition and the consensus. So, so Evan, to your question, who's seen it? It's everything from PlugShare to you know, charging companies like EVgo to utility companies that were at EV Roadmap, uh, as well as um, OEMs. I mean, General Motors saw it, and the response from General Motors at EV Roadmap was they said, this is great. So the response is positive all you know across the board but now it's a matter of okay who can i bring together to create the the jumping off point for you know the people saying we're willing to in, endorse partner with or say we want to utilize this to create the movement to say let's figure out how we can implement it cuz it's a big conversation it's an industry wide discussion this sure. has to go all the way up to dot and they are currently discussing um, signage right now for how they're going to expand upon what will be you know electric corridors and how those, you know, how those will be identified. So this has now been put in front of all those people. Um, so I'm hoping it inspires a more simplified conversation because I think the problem is we've been in the weeds for so long describing electric vehicle charging. You know, we've, can, can we've I, just, yeah, go ahead. 
Can I carry your briefcase when you describe this before Congress? Okay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'd love it. But my thing is I want to provide data wherever I can. If this requires doing like maybe a small pilot program to prove it, I'd like to do that. Um, and I think there's opportunity for it, but it's a matter of getting the right people involved. But once this went public and, and the article from Green Carports came out, I mean, I've been contacted, you know, by a variety of stakeholders even in other countries, such as New Zealand, Norway, the right. Netherlands, UK, uh, someone from Turkey that is in development for, you know, what their plans are for electric vehicles. So this, the response from this was great. And I did provide John uh, for his article what is the expanded, you know, visual identity of what it could be from a global perspective as well. So, and again, and the refinement is still needing to be done with respect to what does each level signify? Level one and two is pretty universal, but <coughs> level three and up, we have to figure out what level of, you know, are we going to say that requires to say it's a level three? Is it 50 kilowatt? Is it a range? Is it 25 to 50? And so these are things that I want to work with the proper players on to make sure we refine it correctly. So, it, yeah. Is this something? Go ahead. Oh. No, I'm sorry, Evan, please. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I was just full question. So uh, is this something you've trademarked? Are you looking to monetize? Are you altruistically donating it to the cause of EVs? What's, what's your stake in this? Yeah, and that's, so I, yeah, the Chargeway name has been trademarked and, and, and the content within it, you know, copyright, you know, underneath it. I, I right. talked about the idea of, could I patent this in some way? And the reality of it is I'm not changing the physical structure sure. of the, you know, mm -hmm. of how charging physically works and the process by which it works is still effectively the same. I'm just redefining it. So um, I did what I could to showcase that I, you know, I did my due diligence to say, you know, underneath the name and, and copyright, this is obviously something I developed, but um, what do I want from it? To your point of, you know, was this altruistic? Yeah. And in a big sense it was, I, I like to solve problems and for the clients I've worked with for years and years, that's what I would do is I would identify a problem and create a solution. And this just happens to be a massive, massive problem with a lot of people that have to be brought to the table to make it work. So um, I, I didn't do it with a sense of like, I'm going to sell this to somebody. It was more the industry needs this. In fact, I was asked that question by a representative at EV Roadmap. Um, and he, he asked candidly after seeing the presentation, he said, well, who, what client did you do this for? And we were sitting <laughs> in one of the main vestibule areas and everybody was out at the reception sitting in, you know, in the main area having drinks. I mean, hundreds of people. And I pointed at them and I said, that's who I did this for. I did this for everyone. And, and he said, well, that's very big of you. And I said, well, that's nice of you to say that. But the reality of it is somebody had to do it. And I just, I think there's a, a lot of things happening with EVs right now that are causing things to stall that could be done and maybe solutions could be created more efficiently and effectively in the private sector. And so I just decided to throw my hat in the ring on this one. So. Awesome. Thanks. Appreciate your candidness. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, you know, it goes somewhere. <laughs> I mean, right now, I'm, I've, got, I've got meetings scheduled for the, the coming weeks that are with everybody ranging from utilities to other charging companies. Um, and so at that rate, it's a matter of, you know, I, I need to find out where the tipping point is first, uh, you know, for, for who is going to say, we see this as the biggest benefit. To be honest, I believe it might be the dealers, but they also won't see it as, as a success unless the charging stations have it waiting for people when they buy the car. Yeah. So it is, it, it is in, going to be in, you know, in sync that I have to be working with each one of these stakeholders to find the way to, you know, to create that moment that is the case study that proves, you know, proves out the concept. So. And Matt, Matt would you, uh, are you somewhat concerned that this may be too many stakeholders to be involved for anyone to come up with a unanimous decision on this? Uh, I mean, after the conversations I've had, I was actually, I, I expected that going into the conversations, but because universally most people said this is great, I was actually kind of encouraged, but it is going to require a great deal of, of organization and a lot of understanding to, uh, one, of the one of the things I've already heard thus far from people is they want to start nitpicking some of the details. like. You know, yeah, colors are great, but no, you need to show the shape of the plug still. Or you need, and well, even back to conversations about what we're talking about for people that are blind, you know, anybody who is colorblind, they can't use colors. So we have to use um, details related, another visual wayfinder for someone who's colorblind. And so people immediately jump to saying, well, let's just use a bunch of shapes. And Ooh. I totally understand the feedback, but then my thought is, if we do that, it starts to take away from the, the elegance of the simplicity and it starts recomplicating things again. Right. right. Is and, that and a so, dodecahedron yeah. or a septagon? You know? Well, <laughs> right. 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 I mean, we, even right now, if we just use colors and numbers, it's an expandable platform. So say, for example, if wireless does come along, we could just add a color. 
And it, but if wireless comes along and we have to add a color and another shape, I mean, Russell, to your point, what shapes do we start doing? I think my biggest concern with using shapes is that we already use shapes, you know, a right set up triangle, upside down triangle, and squares in, you know, transportation signage already. Yeah. And with this, mm -hmm. I wanted to keep it much, much more simplified and just say, no, if you see this type of a colorway with this type of number in it, then that is what you know is charging. So, um, yeah. I, any, any kind of, um, you know, is this just di differentiation on tactile, for example, to, to help the blind EV drivers? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you asked that with the straightest face ever. <laughs> <laughs> And what are you doing about the kangaroo problem? I think, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I think Matt's well, going to be coming to your house, Tony. <laughs> it's, it, it's, been, it's been fun seeing who's been reaching out through even like the website when people have found it because what, I've, what I recognize is that I've been contacted by the stakeholders that are in the industry that I think you know, will benefit from this, but the amount of owners that have reached out saying, this is great, how do I help? Or, or mm. this is great, by the way, can you answer this question for me because I don't understand this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I was already thinking that, like, you know, if you if you had cheap stickers, people could put them on chargers themselves. I guess that's vandalizing, but, you know. Well, the, the, well, the other thought there is, is, I mean, and people have offered that type of thing, and I thought, you know, that, that would be great, but I need to get the buy-off from the people that are going to be helping make this a reality. Right. Because, I mean, if you have too many cooks in the kitchen, all of a sudden, even people that, out of the goodness of their own hearts, want to help sometimes, what if they got it wrong? You know, what if they had a stack of stickers and they put the wrong color and the wrong number yeah, over yeah, above one? Yeah, yeah, so, but it doesn't change the fact that the owners and the grassroots groups and the nonprofit groups that are, that have been vital to the success of EVs thus far, I, hearing how they've responded to this saying, we realize that this will help us actually reach the people that aren't early adopters in a way, that has been what I really wanted to see. So, and, and this, I mean, this lends back to even the conversation we had the last time I was on your guys' uh, show, which was, talking about even how the commercials should look. It's just got to be inviting and it's just got to be simple for people that have never heard about this before. Mm -hmm. and, and in the same sense, if, if, it, if it provides solutions for a utility company that doesn't know how to explain how they provide energy for cars and how that connects to a charging station that doesn't know how to explain, yes, we're a different shape from the other charging station you just saw, but you know this is where you need to be. And then it leads up to the sales process where a dealership can say, we know how to sell this to you in five minutes the same way we can sell you a gas-powered car in five minutes. Yeah. To me, that's the solution. So, I, I will tell you, seriously, here, one of the, the coolest things uh, is one of the, the pictures with the, um, the plug share app. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you could, if you could go to, to any one of the many apps that shows where the charging stations are, and you could preset to say, I have, you know, I have a Nissan Leaf. So only show me blue one, two, and green threes, and it automatically filters everything yeah. else out yep. and just shows you what you want. And you don't even need to know whether it's 1772 or Chatamo or what right. kilowatt or whatever. Just just show me these, and I know that if I go there, I can I can plug in. That's it. That's all I need to know. And the way you just explained it is that's the response of someone who just wants something to work. It's just exactly. make it make it make me know it will work for me. And so what, a lot of the conversations I was having at, at Roadmap, for example, is the conversation of, you know, the comment of range anxiety and using that phrase. I said, that is still a very real thing with respect to there's not enough EVs that can go the distance. But I think, it's un I think we're causing another problem by just calling it range anxiety. I think there's just genuine anxiety that is part of the process for learning how an EV works. Range is one of, one of the aspects, which mm -hmm. obviously this doesn't solve. But if it allows someone to better understand how it does work, it may make them more comfortable to say, well, maybe what is on the market would work for me, because part of the process is them understanding how to use it. So, I mean, even things like highway signs that you know, a lot of times they have markers for EV charging or gas or diesel, and and to be able to put those colored markers on there for oh, I can pull off here and get yeah. a fill up. Well, right, yeah. and have it be you know the wayfinder and the breadcrumb aspect of it is what I really wanted to create. And I'm Tony. I'm not sure if you're still on Green Carports and can share it, but. The images yeah. that one of the images that is on their article is that standard DOT EV sign, just simply with the added icons underneath. Yeah. So that it, to your point, Evan, if you're driving along at 70 miles an hour, you'll know just by glancing over, like, oh, whoa, that okay, I can use a red four here. Bang, that's that's for Absolutely. me. Absolutely, uh, I think this is brilliantly simple and and awesome. I, I think it's great. Well, cool. 
Yeah. yeah oh, there yeah, it Tony. Uh, there it is. Yeah. Tony. There. yeah. yeah. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. That that makes a good deal of sense when you and, look at that. And, and to, oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead, no, Russell. Go ahead. go ahead, Matt. Well, I was going to say, Tony, to your question about you know for PlugShare and, and how any app could adapt and use this. For they have everything else built in that works as it needs. And if you click on a specific charger, it brings up all the details you might want to know. But to the layperson, if they're just buying an EV for the first time and using it for the first time, and they know their car takes Blue Three, to your point. They all they have to do is switch a graphic icon inside of their app. I mean, that's really it. And right, and that's right. I kept coming back to those points that if we can make this easier for people to sell and understand, I think the other issues of you know the range anxiety and you know variety th those will we can't solve those. We're not building the cars, but we can solve this. And that that's what I felt. Oh yeah, and that's that's my comparison of again the two ecosystems. You know, the guy on the left mm -hmm. obviously is not having near as much fun as the guy on the right with the, with the new electric <laughs> ecosystem. So, yeah. Emojis. Oh, yay. We I did emojis. I, I did honestly go. So one of the images I use inside of the uh, explanation I have for the deck and proposal that I have is do you, have you guys recalled seeing that toy that toddlers use? I mean, can play with use. They play with it. It's red and blue and it has the shapes cut out of it and they put the yellow shaped plastic pieces in. Yeah, mm -hmm. literally inside my presentation, I have. I that. still play with that. <laughs> well, it was. I, I kept thinking, how simple can we make this that even a kid can figure it out? And I kept coming back to the image of that toy in my mind. So what I inside the presentation, I have that toy, and then I basically tell people like, this is kind of where I'm going. I'm not trying to talk down to you. I'm just trying to say this is how simple we need to be. And then the comparison is that once I show that you know, hey, gas is easy and electricity is not right now. The, the next comparison is that toy next to an erector set and saying you can't hand an erector set to a toddler and say, hey, you're going to move this piece now and this is how easy it is. No, they're just going to go back to playing the thing that works in the same way if you're on a dealer lot trying to buy a car and you have to start figuring out just how to do something you've always done, it's like, you know what, I'd rather just go and buy the thing that works and I don't have to think about it. And the, sales, the salesman feels the same way. So if we can well, resolve those issues, I think we have a, we have a solution on our hands. And, and speaking of which, the the dealer, you know, anyone who wants to earn money at a dealership selling EVs would have a plug locating app. You know, I, I, I say plug share, but, you know, I know that there's literally dozens of them. They would have the app on their phone and they could say, oh, well, this car takes, you know, this whatever, you know, blue one and two, green three, Nissan Leaf. Right. And would pull out his phone show the config, you know, do the configurations and say, oh, well, it's this, this, and this. And then, you know, literally say, no, here, look at my phone. These are all the places that you could charge. Right. And I'll help you download the app so mm -hmm. that you could always find a charge compatible with this. And in 30 seconds could just demystify the entire charging question that every I, I, new owner has. And that thing for me was the visual trigger, as you just described it. If they can physically be standing on the dealer lot and, and click on the charge door and it flips open and it has a blue three, and it's, you know, again, say it's a BMW i3, and you say, great, now, as you pointed out, now you look at the app. Okay, here's the app, and here's how it works. And then when they show up at a charging station and it has that exact same visual identity, it makes it so much more easy to just hop from one thing to the next. The easier we can make anyone understand this, the way that I fr phrased it to someone I was speaking to at Roadmap, as to what I think we've done, as I said, you know what, it's as if the entire world and automotive world and all, and all consumers have been doing algebra for the last hundred years and we're all experts at algebra. And then somebody decided to say, well, calculus is going to provide this new thing. So we're, instead of teaching everybody calculus or, or helping them understand it, we just forced everybody to take a calculus test only knowing algebra and everybody failed. And people are like, we're just going to go back to doing algebra because it's easier and we all know it and it's just simple. So I thought, okay, if that's how it's coming across and it's just too complicated, then we need to figure out how to walk someone into that conversation so it feels familiar. So. Hmm. Yeah. All good like points, Matthew. All <laughs> good points. So, so I, you know, I know that this is a huge uphill struggle. You know what I mean? Because you're dealing with car companies, which are some of the biggest ships, the most difficult objects on the planet <laughs> to change their heading. Right. Um, they're fighting the technology behind this, much less labeling it so that people can understand it. 
You know what I mean? I doubt that they're like, oh, thank you for making our job simpler and helping us sell these vehicles. <laughs> I, I guess what I'm wondering is like, is there anything that, uh, aside from making stickers and slapping them on charge point stations, which we do not recommend as a show, my attorney <laughs> wanted us to know that. Uh, is there anything that people can do? Do you want them to like write a car company or a senator or a representative and say, hey, there's this thing, check it out? Actually, the way that you just phrase it is exactly what I've been telling people that have contacted me that are owners. They've said, well, great, this is great and it would be awesome if we had it right now, but how do we make it happen as fast as humanly possible? And I've said, well, hey, here we've got all the social media channels set up for Chargeway. I'll be, I'll be putting up more and more content. Follow it and share it and let people see it. But also, to your point, contact the companies that are actually players in the industry that can change this. And that includes, again, organizations like Plug in America, Charge, you know, uh, uh, you know, ChargePoint, EVgo, uh, Blink, any of the major charging companies, um, Electrify America that's, again, putting together that large infrastructure now with, with the Volkswagen money. Um, and, you know, it, PlugShare and, and the apps, Green Lots. I mean, any of them that you use, we all know who they are. And if, and if you're an EV adopter and a, you know, an EV owner that says, I like this, my thought is then let the world know you do. If we don't collectively show that this is something that we know will work for advancing our efforts, then it's just going to be a conversation we had at one point and who cares. And that's what I, I, my, my way to incentivize everybody is to say, if you think it's a great idea, let the world know and let the people that are major players in the industry, let them know, let your dealership know. If a dealership all of a sudden starts hearing about something that would allow them to sell a product more easily, all of a sudden that might become a conversation. So right. it's going to, again, to all your points, this is not a small undertaking. And I knew it when I decided to start working on it. So, um, but, I feel like I have a strong foundation to jump from and the response I received from OEMs and charging companies and everybody was so great that I know this could work. Now it's a matter of, you know, making it happen. So can I make a suggestion? Sure. Yeah. I think what you need is a page on chargeway.net. That's chargeway one word dot net. Mm -hmm. um, you've got a thing on here to, to, for people to contact you and, and mm -hmm. leave your affiliation. What you should also have is a page that, lets them contact their local congressional rep yeah local senator, utility yeah. a lo local utility a yeah. local a, a charging company a national auto company and say hey i'm this person i own this and i think this is a great idea and you guys should do it a couple of clicks they fill in a name an email address boom you know yeah I mean? like again you know this this kind of thing is going to take a real groundswell yeah because there's a lot of people who just, it's just easier to ignore it, obviously, right? We haven't come up with anything better than J1772 and Chatamo <laughs> and all of these other things. And, and I, you know, the people that deal with it every day get it and it's in their head, but nobody else does. So, well, and, and that's that was, well, you just said it. And, and I think that might be one of the most inter interesting bridges or gaps to bridge is that the, so a lot of a lot of people that have, are early adopters just want EVs on the road, and, and whatever it takes to do that, they want it. And there's a lot of people that also are very into the tech side of it, and they are very interested in you know maybe even the environmental impact side of it. And my two cents on that is, but don't let that deter you from making it easier for people to get the same car that you drive, because that will still fulfill the things that you want. And it's okay if they don't think about it the same way. And um, I. I I've seen definitely more people just say, hey, let's just get more EVs on the road and this will help. So, uh, but I, to your suggestion, and there's a lot of areas on the Chargeway website I want to be adding, which includes an FAQ section. Just what, you know, what is the status of this? Who have you talked to, et cetera? How can I help? But to your point about, here's links to contact the people in your area and here's, and here's uh, resources to do that. I definitely should add that and I, I will. Well, I can tell you what you could do, I think, uh -oh. is provide a link. This is something that Facebook rolled out just um, earlier this year. I believe if you provide a link to facebook.com slash town hall, when, when people click on it, it'll open up Facebook. It'll go, it'll auto log them in. Mm -hmm. But either way, if, if people go to Facebook themselves and click um, on the PC or on, on your computer, it's on the left. There's a town hall link. And as long as Facebook knows where you live, it gives you a list of your state and federal representatives with a contact button. Oh man, that's fantastic. So that's what I would recommend people do is. And we, and we only want 10% yeah. for that idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and Evan, I just saw your tweet come through and, uh, 
damn, that's a direct tweet, man. And I, I, uh, I got to tell you, I appreciate that one. <laughs> oh, well, you know, Elon always responds to my tweets, so I'm sure he'll. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would be, yeah, I, I would be interested to see, uh, yeah, his thoughts on this. I, to be honest, I, I would like to believe that because of the entire premise behind what Chargeway is, is effectively to accelerate the world's transition to owning electric vehicles. Yep. So um, if, yeah. Oh yeah, no, yeah, go ahead, Matt. Right now. Do you have, do you have, do you have Goshen on the phone? <laughs> no, no, I was gonna say, Evan, Elon's on the phone and he just canceled your Model 3 orders. <laughs> <laughs> right, electronically shutting down the SNX as we speak. Exactly. <laughs> but no, I mean that's yeah, I, I think that you know, Tesla as an example, I think this would this would only further help the, the efforts that they've made. And in turn, I think because it would even further help the people that Elon and Tesla wanted to incentivize to build electrics, which is the traditional car makers. And so mm -hmm. my game plan is how can this be an easier thing for everyone? And Chargeway was designed to be an asset to the entire industry and not a competitive thing. If everybody used it, everybody's job would be easier. Yep. Right. right. And the companies that use it will find their life easier. Yeah. So the early adopters are the ones that are going to get the most advantage from it. Yep. Given the fact that this makes perfect sense, is very inexpensive, and would help everyone, um, it's doomed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I Sorry, that. man. I have to kill myself. <laughs> it's like that dose of reality. I, and, and I, I'm like, you know what? But I totally know what you mean. And I, I think to myself, let's. I'm going to do everything. I, I'm going to get as scrappy as I can to make sure that. That, albeit is normally the case, is not the case this time. So, yeah. Well, thank well, you, Matt. That uh, you. that's a, you. a great idea. We we appreciate you coming on and sharing it with us. Yeah. No. Again, I, I appreciate every time I get a chance to come and chat with you guys about stuff, and I I'm flattered that basically everybody has said, "Well, this is great. So now what?" You know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I get to figure out the now what and with any support I can get from everybody I mean you guys included and other people you know that are fans of, of electrics and we all want to see them you know become more mainstream if you feel this is a solution to make that happen then I am I am game to get all the support I can from everybody so thank you thank you Matt for coming on and, and for everyone if you didn't get the chargeway.net URL um, we are going to post post it on our Facebook page. Um, I want to make sure that everyone visits our main site at whatdrives.us. Um, we'll have this show and all our previous shows in video form, streaming and downloading. Uh, we post articles. Russell has um, been test driving some cars and doing some reviews, and you're going to see videos and uh, written reviews up there. Our complete archives at whatdrives.us. Wow, Tony, I totally missed that cue, and I looked at the script. I didn't even see it. So, no. I, I'll do yours. I don't know where you got this episode, but if you want to make sure you never miss a show, subscribe to the show on Stitcher, Slacker, YouTube, Google Play, or iTunes, perhaps even all of them. Um, make sure and leave a review. I want to be, make sure review. you leave a review, a good one, positive one. <laughs> we should probably go to the panel, starting with Matt, maybe, and see if there's any final shout-outs. Yeah, Matt, you want to give a shout-out to yourself or, um, <laughs> you know? Well, yeah, I don't know about to myself. I'd like to believe that at this point, if, if, if I can keep working on projects that get the industry's attention, you know, if, if I can say, hey, here's how I think we should build a compelling electric car like the Jolt, and that gets industry attention, and then I think, well, hey, here's how we could sell current electric vehicles by using this type of ling you know, language, and that gets attention. Mm -hmm. I'd like to believe that I I've tapped into at least some ideas that will be, be very beneficial to everyone. So uh, whether that's Chargeway or um, anything else that I can do to help you know, other people that are in the industry. So I guess, yeah, you can go. I, I feel so weird always saying this ever, but it's like, yeah, my company's a branding and marketing agency called Teske Design. So teskedesign.com, that's where I hide, but Chargeway is the idea that's specifically for electrics. So. Yeah, I'll tell you what, at this point now, I can't wait to come back out to Portland for vacation uh, one of these days. Um, I'm going to take you to base camp and buy you a beer and uh, we're gonna <laughs> talk talk more about this. I like base camp, so I'll, I'll, oh. I'll definitely be there. <laughs> All right. There you go. So, uh, Evan, uh, any um, final shout outs? 
No shout outs. I'm good. But I, I, I look, I really appreciate Matt coming on tonight. I think this is a, a brilliant idea and um, I, I hope it, it gains a lot of momentum and, and gets the attention it should from the industry. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Mark. Uh, just a shout out to Canada 150 again. And, uh, <laughs> enjoy your holiday, everybody, on July 1st. So uh, it is official, right? I mean, um, we get we get July 1st off. Oh, yeah, and with pay. It's Every a stat holiday now. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. nice. I, I got to say, I gotta say though, the NHL Hall of Fame has to induct Theron Fleury at some point, man. Like, that's <laughs> got to happen. It will happen at some point. Yes, indeed. Oh, man, that's got to happen. So, that, that, that's nice. that's my yeah, that's my that's my Canada uh, comment for the evening. <laughs> there you go. Me, Russell? Yeah. Do you oh, have any? Thank uh, you. Hey, I um, as Tony mentioned, what drives to US? Um, look for some reviews. Uh, the Toyota Avalon is up. The Prius Prime has been up. Um, there's going to be reviews on the Kia Optima plug, uh, Kia Optima Hybrid, the Acura MDX Hybrid, and um. This week, the Honda Accord Ooh. Touring Hybrid. Yes. Yeah, room, room. Um, uh, oh, and the Rav Four Hybrid. I, I just uh, should be finishing up most of those in the next week. So, if you want to find out about new hybrids and plugins, uh, we've got reviews for you. Also, want to shout out to a friend of mine from work, uh, Rachel. Rachel has a blog called Three Cats and a Lady, and that's T H R E E Three Cats and a Lady. Um, she talks about rescue cats and stuff, and she's really cool. So uh, check out her website. That's all I got. Um, other than to say thanks to Matt. Yeah. Yeah, I want to thank thank all of you for uh, for being on the show. I want to thank all the listeners for spending some time with us. Of course, I want to thank Michael Manring for the theme music. Make sure you go to manthing.com. Watch some of his amazing videos. And that's it. All I have yet to say is make sure you tune in and download next week and find out what drives us. And where we charge the things that drive us. And where we charge them at yeah. chargeway.net. Yes. <laughs> See you next week.